This video is going to teach you how to use the formulas pi r squared and pi times d to answer any type of question um, about area and circumference of a circle. Um, we're going to start off by looking at all the parts of the circle and how to identify them. Then we'll look at using the formulas in various uh, types of situations, um, depending on whether it's a simple find the area or find the circumference question, or whether it's more of a sort of multi-step problem um, that you get more, more and more these days. So looking at labelling all the parts of the circle, if you want to pause the video and have a think about if you know what all of the all the different parts of the circle are, then do that now. Okay, so we have, uh, I've got two circles here, so I can uh, talk you through all the different parts of the circle. We'll start with um, this, the purple, the outside of the circle. That's the perimeter of the circle, and it's got a special uh, name, it's called the circumference. Another common um, word that you would have heard through circles is the radius, which is the length from the edge of the shape, circle even, edge of the circle, to the centre of the circle. Then you've also got diameter, which goes from one edge of the circle through the centre to the other end of the circle. And therefore the diameter is always twice as big as the radius because it goes twice the distance. It goes to the centre and then back out, rather than the radius that just goes to the centre. Um, the way to remember the, the radius, diameter and circumference, I always say to do it with the length of the words. So radius is the shorter word, so it goes to the shorter length. Diameter, again, that's, a, that's the longer length, so it goes to the longer word. And then circumference, that's the length all of the way around the outside of the circle, so that's the longest word. You've then got, um, this line here, which is a chord, so that's any line that goes across the circle, but it, it doesn't go through the centre, so any other line. And then you've also got the tangent, which is a line that just touches the edge of the of the circle here. It makes a, the way I remember it, is it makes a, it's not a very straight line, let me do that again. It makes a T with the, um, with the radius, so if I get a straight line, You can see that makes a T shape, which is a way to remember that it's a tangent. Then you've also got um, the different areas. So obviously, the, you've got the full area of the of the circle, but you've also got this part here. So when it, you draw a chord, you end up cutting the circle into two separate parts, and they're called segments. And I remember that because it's got the word egg in it, so eggment. This part looks like the top of an egg. Imagine you're having egg and soldiers, that would be like the top of the egg that you've cut off. Then you've also got the other area, which is when you cut um, into the centre of the circle, and that makes a sector. So the way that I remember that is that if I know that the segment is the curved one uh, that goes has a, has a straight line at the bottom, and then I know the other one sector. Um, I don't have a special way to remember that. So you've got the radius, diameter, circumference, sector, segment, tangent, chord, and that is everything that you need to know in terms of labelling a circle. So steps two and three then are using the formulae to find the area inside a circle and the circumference of a circle. Like I said, the circumference is just the perimeter. So the two formulas you need are pi r squared, which gives you area, and then pi d, which gives you the circumference. So, again, you, these are just two formulas you need to learn. The only way I can think to help you remember them um, is that we know that we always use squared when we're looking at uh, units of area. So, for example, you'd find the area in metres squared or centimetres squared. And so the formula that has a squared in is the one that helps you find the area. The other one is, is the perimeter. So the question says, find the area and circumference of each circle, give your answer to one decimal place. Well, as soon as you see this type of question in the exam, write down your two formulae. We'll work with um, this circle first, so I'll use purple for that one. So A is area, so we need to do pi times r squared. Really massive classic mistake is that people do, okay, well that's pi times 12 squared. It's not, because 12 is the diameter, not the radius. So you must make sure that you're careful about changing this 
so the radius would be six centimeters because that's halfway so pi times six squared and then the circumference would be pi times d which is pi times 12. In your calculator you've got a button that represents a pi and that is um, this yellow um, symbol here so you have to press the yellow shift button to get pi up and then you times that by six squared press the SD button to get it into a numerical answer and we have 113.09733355 always write that whole number down on your paper then go back and have a look at what they wanted so we want one decimal place so that's 113.1 and that's going to be centimeters squared uh, next one pi times uh, 12 so clear your, compute, clear your calculator pi times 12 is 37.7 okay have a get this circle on your own pause the video in a couple of seconds uh, the answers will appear so the answers are 201.1 centimeters squared for the area and 50.3 centimeters for the circumference i hope you remembered to double the radius to get the diameter when you're doing the circumference measurement so how do these questions get harder then? Well, one thing that you could have is you might ask to find the perimeter and the area of a semicircle. Um, we know that pi times d uh, gives us the circumference of a full circle. So that's your circumference. So if you ever um, get given a semicircle, you just need to uh, you just need to divide that by two because obviously let me show you with a different colour. If we divide the circumference by 2, that's going to give us this curved distance around here. And then you have to add on this straight line, which is your diameter. Okay. If you find the area of a semicircle, it's uh, much easier because this is obviously half a circle. So we can just do pi times r squared, which is our normal formula, and then divide it by 2. So let's have a look at um, how you would do this with these questions. So we'd end up with pi times 7, that would give us the perimeter of the full circle. So I'd do that on my calculator first. So that's the circumference of the full circle. I'm going to divide that by 2, and that gives me the curved area, sorry, the curved section, which is 10.99557429 again you should be writing these bits down um, in your exam so that's divided by 2 and then we need to add on this length here 7 centimeters to get the full perimeter so that's 17.9955 so I'm going to write all that down so add it on 7 17.99 Five five seven four. Okay, that should be enough. We're rounding to uh, one decimal place. That's what I'm going to do because uh, that's sensible. So one decimal place would be here. The nine rounds this nine up. Obviously, we can't put a ten here, so we get eighteen point zero, and that's centimeters. Um, area should be a lot simpler. We're just going to do pi times not seven squared. It's going to be three point five because we're looking for the radius squared. So pi times 3.5 squared gives me a full area of 38.4845. I'm going to divide that by 2 because it's a semicircle. So I get 19.2. And that's centimetres squared. So what other question uh, might they ask you then? Well, a common question is when they'll put um, sort of a circle into a contextual and um, functional uh, kind of situation. So here I've got a question where um, a circle is cut out of a piece of wood to make a clock face. What is the area of the wood that is left over? So if you imagine when this was a full, um, well let me colour it in so you can imagine it. So when we had a full piece of wood, this is, we've got a black marking of the circle that we're going to cut out. Um, we have an area of 
well, you need to firstly work out the area of the original piece of wood. You should know that the rectangle, you do um, length times by width. So let's do that first. So the rectangle, R, is equal to 8 times 10, which is 80 centimetres squared. But we're then going to cut out this circle. So we need to find the area of the circle, because uh, that's then going to be cut out. So I'm going to put C for the um, now put A for the area of the circle. Actually, I'll write it out. Area of circle. So it's the same as always, pi r squared. Uh, now the radius. Well, we've got no measurements on here at all. So you might be thinking, oh well, I at least need the diameter so I can half it to get the radius. And that's the kind of thing they're testing in the exam. They're checking that you can. Um, sort of use your common sense and you've got problem solving skills because if you look along you should see that we'll, we actually we already know that the height of the wood is eight centimeters that's going to be the same length as the diameter of the circle because the circle touches the top and the bottom of the wood so we know that the diameter is eight and so the radius is going to be four so it's going to be pi times four squared which is Uh, 50.265 um, 4826 482 46 even okay so that's our area of the circle we know that's been cut out so that's been taken away from the wood we're looking at how much wood's been left over so I'm going to do uh, 80 take away my answer and the reason I put ANS there is because there's actually a button on the calculator you can use to do that. So 80 was the original word. Take away the answer we just had. Gives us 20 point, I'm going to round that to one decimal place. So 29.7. And that is still in centimetres squared. Okay, similar type of question. Find the area that's been painted green. This time we've got a triangle. You must learn the formula to find the area of a triangle. Um, it is the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle and then divided by 2. So that's 8 times 5 divided by 2. So that's 40 divided by 2, which is 20 centimetres squared. Again, we need to take away the area of the circle because that's been cut out, we're just looking for the green section. Uh, so that's pi times radius, we've already got the radius, so that's pi times two squared. And this time I'm gonna show you how you can do it all in one. So 20 take away pi times two squared. And that gives me an area left over of 7.4, and again that's centimeters squared. So as you can see, as long as you know your formula, as long as you've learned your area of a triangle, area of a circle, area of a rectangle, um, and your formula to find the circumference of a circle as well, as long as you've learned those few small formulas, it's really easy then to apply them in the exam. And questions like this would, would take up probably three, four, five marks, depending on the amount of like converting between maybe units that you'd have to do um, and the complexity of the shapes. So it's, it's worth learning them because they will definitely come up at some point during your um, your exam. Next one, we've got a trapezium. Please don't forget in your exam that this trapezium, area of a trapezium, is given to you. It's at the front of your booklet. This is this actual sort of diagram here. This is cut and pasted from the front of the exam paper. A and B, your two parallel sides, that's 15 and 6. And then the height is 8 foot, which is here. And this 16, it's, that's not needed to us, that's just there to try and confuse you um, and check that you know which, which numbers to pick up from the diagram. So again, we're looking for the grey area. So area of the trapezium, um, we're just going to use the front of the formula book. So we have a half, um, A plus B is 6 plus 15. And then that's times by the height, which is 8 area of your circle, you should know this by now, pi r squared, pi, it's not times 8 squared, you should know that's the diameter by now, 
pi times 4 squared. So let's put these into the calculator. Use our fraction button to put the half in. Open up our brackets. Oops. So we're going to times that by the bracket, which is 6 plus 15. And I'm going to times that by the height, which is 8. That gives you an area of 84. The circle is pi r squared, so pi times 4 squared. And then we're going to take the answer away from the area of the trapezium. So that's 84 takeaway answer. So that gives us 33.7 is our answer. And that's feet squared, which is left over. Uh, I'm just going to go back and write down the solution. So that was 50.3. And that was uh, feet squared. And that one was feet squared. Okay, finally, um, what about if they're not asking you to take away? What if they're asking you to put uh, two shapes together? So here we've got a cross section of this ice cream is made up from a triangular cone and a semicircle of strawberry ice cream. What is the total area of this cross section? I want you to pause the video and have a go at solving this on your own using the things you've just watched in the video. And then in a couple of seconds, uh, I'll talk you through the solution. Okay, so we've got a triangle, I'll call that T, and we've got a semicircle, I'll call that C. So the area of the triangle we know is base times height divided by 2. That is 4 times 10 divided by 2. 40 divided by 2. And this is sort of the level of working that I'd expect you to show in the exam as well. You show them every single step that you're doing. So if you make any silly mistakes, they, they know that you know what you're doing. They can give you, the examiner wants to give you as many marks as possible. But if you don't show them what you're doing, then they're not going to be able to give them to you. Uh, now we've got the ice cream. I shall call that I see for ice cream. We need the full area of if as if it was a full circle. So that's going to be pi times two squared because this length of four is the diameter of the circle. And then I need to divide that by two because I only want a semicircle because that's all that I can see. So pi times two squared. That gives me twelve point six. And then I'm going to divide that by 2 to give me 6.3 centimetres squared. Now this time, because we want the full area of the cross section, we're going to add them. So it's 20 plus 6.3, which is 26.3 centimetres squared.